Fred Dibner and his steersman Alf Molyneux have now reached the Scottish borders on their epic steam-powered tour to discover Britain's industrial past. They're on their way from West Cumbria to Bowness on the Firth of Forth. We're now in Scotland and we're heading for the foundry to find out more about the casting process and foundry men. Castings are a very important part of a traction engine. The cylinder block, the, the cylinder end covers and of course the pistons are all made from cast iron. Like even the hub caps over the wheels are made from cast iron. Uh, the business at the front where the steering gear is, is made from cast iron. The running repairs they made in Cumbria appear to have been a success and the engine is now running well, which is a good thing as they've still got more than 50 miles to go today. Yeah, well, there's some quite long journeys involved in it that will be pretty uneventful, really, other than waving to people as they pass by, like. And then there's always the unplanned for, you know, things that happen, like you, you get invited into people's houses and things like that, which is going to be quite dangerous, you know. You end up pouring whiskey down your throat and all that sort of thing. Happened to me before that, you know. We'll just bring it round to our house so we can take a picture of it in front of the house and ended up at a party, you know. Weddings, we've done weddings, you know. Ten miles. Right, we'll go off the engine. Get arrested by one of them funny men in the blue suits. Yes, one of them meetings. Glasgow was the second city in the empire. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was all easy. Glasgow was just one massive foundry. Just yeah. found Big engineers. Well, best yeah. engineers in the world. Come yeah. From yeah. Man Bird, isn't it? yeah. 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 This is a petition for our mine. Yeah. I'll sign that. Yeah. Thank you very much. My father was a miner. Must yeah. have managed. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I did a talk, but everybody with that fish will be understood what we're talking about. <laughs> with the engine's belly tank full up with water, they're ready for the road again. We're now in Falkirk, which of course was the place where the Industrial Revolution in Scotland all started. And here, a, a, a great iron foundry called the Carron Iron Works, that were opened in 1760. After 30 years, it employed a thousand men and became the biggest iron smelting plant in the whole of Europe. It was here James Watt's first castings for his earliest engines were manufactured. Although there's not much of it left now, this area was the cradle of the steam revolution, where Watt built some of the first steam engines. And Watt wasn't the only pioneering engineer working in these parts. This boat behind me is, is a three-quarter size uh, copy of the world's first steam-powered vessel, you know, and it was designed by an engineer called William Symington. It's called the Charlotte Dundas, and the engine for it was built at the Curran Iron Works, where Symington was the chief engineer. And it was actually designed for to pull barges on a canal, which it did quite successfully. The horizontal engine in it was far in front of its time. In 1803, it pulled two barges laden with 70 tons along a 20-mile stretch of the Forth and Clyde Canal at three and a half miles an hour, you know, which is really faster than what we're doing with the traction engine. Mm. Built by the Mackenzie Ship and Boat Yard, eh? The canal owners were very concerned about the wash from the engine or the paddles, and it never really went into service, you know, what a shame, you know, could have, you know, it's so long ago, 1803. He fell in the canal and drowned it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> In 
here were the Charlotte Dundas's moored on the canal. There's a modern wonder of engineering, you know, the Falkirk wheel, the world's one and only revolving boat lift. And it's so simple, you know, it makes you wonder why nobody ever thought of it before. It was officially opened by the Queen in 2002 and it did away with the leaden locks that covered an height of 115 feet from the top canal to this canal down here. At each revolution, it moves 600 tonnes of water and the machinery involved are, are 10 hydraulic motors and they're, they're unbelievably efficient, you know. They say that there's the same amount of energy uh, used each revolution as there is in boiling two kettles of water. I'd better go and relieve my mate Elf now, who's been faithfully looking after the engine. I'm, I'm off for a cheese bussy. We're, uh, we're just trying too hard and uh, there's a big hill, what, if we were on the level, we'd be okay with the water level in the boiler as it is, but we've got to go down this hill, which could uncover the crown of the firebox, melt in the fusible plug, which means we could be here all night instead of having a pint in about half an hour, you know. Which, that's where we're going to, where that flame is burning on the horizon. It's that operation we did up in Cumbria on it, when we we playing that 5 sixteenths off the uh, edge of the steam port. Made a hell of a difference. So they need to find some water quickly. Right at the last minute, help is at hand. And there's nothing like getting it straight from the men from the waterboard. Oh, aye, they'll be coming out of the funnel. I think I need a drink. Thanks very much, Jack. An engine like this is a rare sight around here, but in the early 1900s, there were tens of thousands of them steaming around Britain's roads. had a good long run today. So how's Fred feeling about the performance of the engine now? Well, we're getting better with this run in now. <laughs> it's, uh, we've had some good spells of maybe 14 mile an hour of taking speeds like that. If you keep 200 pounds on the clock, and it, it seems to accelerate up hills now, which it wouldn't do, would it, when we were in Cumbria, you know? There's nothing dropped off it, you know, that's the main thing. We'll wrap it up and go for a pint, I think, usual style. But a traction engine's not like a car, and before they can go to the pub at the end of the day, there's always plenty of work to do. Tonight, there's a few nuts that need tightening. So it's in a better position. Uh, two minutes. Staying at railway workshops is a very handy place to break down at. You know. We're not really broke down. I mean, we could have tightened them up, but they'd have just come loose again, you know, which while we're at it, we might as well do it properly. And uh, you just might want to drop this nut now down onto the top of the red hot firebox. Right, now then, big spanner. Sorting out the coal and water is Alf's department. Yeah, 
never could find a washer of a suitable thickness was one year. Now we need the Alex and his washer department. You know, if we can find a washer at right thickness, okay. which there's a half a bucket full just arrived. Uh, oh, that looks uh, the part, maybe. Right. right. It's right now, see. Right. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. And I'm going to do Break the main nut up against the lock nut because the two are yeah. loose together. Yeah, they can't go any further, can they, because yeah. of the split thing. It's <laughs> I'm ready for finishing now. But, uh, he's got to do his repairs. We're preparing for tomorrow, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a bit of coal. We want quite a bit more yet. With some polishing to do. And uh, sheet it up. And then it starts again tomorrow. It's nice and bright. We light the fire and muck it all up again. And then back to square one when we finish running. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Met some cracking people up here, haven't we? Anyway, I'll have to get on with my work. Oh, yeah. Did it come loose, that was? I don't know. Right, myself to death, I don't know. <laughs> this is the foundry we've been heading for, the Valentine and Bowen S Iron Company. And it's been here since 1820 and employs over 100 people. Yeah, this is it. Here they cast everything from pillar boxes to lamp standards to beautiful iron railings and, you know, for places as far away as London and maybe all over the world, you know. But, you know, looking around at the quality of the workmanship and the ornamental stuff, there can't be many places as good as what this place is, believe me. If you come through this wee lads, yeah. Here you come. Here you come. Hmm. Oh, there's some lovely tattle in here, isn't it? Yes, it's really, yeah. really nice. This yeah. is uh, one of our pattern stores here, Fred. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you can see, mm. we can match up just about any head mm. with any bar, mm. and mm. these days that's sort of big business for yeah. us. Oh, oh, the restoration yeah. work yeah. in parks and mm. what have mm. you. I don't think we've ever counted them, but I think we've got over 100,000 patterns within mm. the foundry, so it's mm. a lot. Mm. It's a lot, yeah. 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 But many of these mm. patterns will date back to, you know, when the foundries oh, yeah. first started. Yeah. And you'll still have them mm. patterns somewhere. Absolutely. Really? We'll never, mm. ever throw any throw patterns anywhere. at all. Mm. No, never do. Never do. Mm. Mm. A lot of people don't realise that every one of these had to be made out of wood, didn't it, before yes. it was made Absolutely. out of more cast iron. Absolutely. You know, there's some skill there, isn't yeah. there? In you go, boys. When you go, oh, when this, you go. This is yeah. uh, the pattern shop. This it? is a pattern yeah, shop, yeah, lads. Yeah. Aye. Uh, yeah. Life starts here. Yeah. Yeah. We're one of the last general job in foundries mm. that's left these yeah. days, and uh, but we're seeing all sorts mm. of things like postcards and drawings, mm. and mm. and they go into the they come into the pattern shop, and mm. the lads like Alan here and yeah. William and Brian and the boys, mm. they, uh, they, they they sort of turn it into reality if you want, yeah. you know. Mm. And then to here it sort of goes down to the shop to be cast. Yeah. It's nice to see the sort of cast iron coming mm. back, sort of fighting oh, back against yeah. all the yeah. plastics well, and the very the bars, durable that's stuff, nice. isn't it? Indeed, they don't, they indeed. Don't yeah. Wear like <laughs> no, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Right, I'll mind your feet as you come down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So this, Fred, this is the next stage from the pattern shop. Here. Yeah. Mm. Once the pattern's made, they mm. come down here into the moulding shop. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you recognise this is a, a baller, yeah. the street baller, street furniture. That's another yeah. big thing that we do. And this is, Ricky here yeah, is closing the box the cores, up. Aren't they, then? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. And you can see the dark core there, so yeah. the metal sort of goes round about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The can of soap production, Fred, we've got to let them go on. Just blowing all the extra dust out so there's no any residue there. But, eh, uh, mm. aye, so we do the street furniture. We do big lamp posts here. Mm. Uh, oh, the, well, this is our heavy end, so-called, because the, the larger, heavier castings are made in here. And you can see the size of the boxes. Mm. They're big. But when we move on to the next stage, you'll see a lot of the smaller castings, mm. smaller mm. things, you know. That's OK, mate. Yeah. So when that's that, Fred, I think we should move on into the next moment. Yeah. So, you, right. right. yeah. you didn't want to fight with this boy, <laughs> eh? I tell no, you. no, you're bigger hey. than me. 
So this is the, the main moulding shop we're going through to now. This is the main moulding shop. Jacket seems to have been set on fire a few times. <laughs> <laughs> There's three tonne of metal in the furnace. It all arrives at once and each different shop gets a tonne. And they sort of have different turns uh, when yeah. the metal is, just to make sure. You know, they all, they all get an equal chance of going home a wee bit early. That's about the yeah. size of it. So that's it coming now. This will be uh, ductile iron or spherodial graphite, but I can't see that with my teeth. <laughs> but you laughed at it. What's wrong with my teeth? <laughs> The metal goes into the ladle, yeah. and that's the magnesium that's, yeah. uh, that's making it as bright as you yeah. see it there, lads. Yeah. And that'll bring all the impurities yeah. up to the top. You kind of have yeah. that going into the, the, the casting, because yeah. the, the impurities would be in the casting. That's I'm just popping the ladle up there. Yeah. There we go. So get the wheel on for pouring and tilting it yeah. it comes into the yeah. shop there. So this is the, the, the molten yeah. metal coming through into the molding shop now. Yeah. It's a bit of like a, a pint of Guinness there, Fred, whereby all the impurities come up to the top. As you see, the, the furnace man has a thing like Neptune's fork and he takes all the, the, the slag off the top yeah. so that we're left with the pure metal there. sand moulding uh, plant there. It's still done in the traditional way with the hand ladles as you see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got to be pretty strong to carry one of them about there. I think one of the lads was seeing there's 56 oh, pounds yeah, in it yeah. there. Yeah, it's, I know, man, it's not as though you're just doing one, is it? Yes, you've uh, got yeah. all them holes for pillow. Yeah. You've got to be a real man to do yeah, that. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. You think you'd, uh, you'd be up for it these days, well, you think? up until my present state of health, I'd have right. been all right with that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I tell you, you're more yeah. a man than me, mate. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, be able yeah. for that. Well, oh, Brian, are you getting older or is that getting heavier? It's getting heavier. <laughs> In the end, he's going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. So uh, he'll be a big, strong lad. You wouldn't let him give you a slow He's playing them on as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. And see the height. And then he has to take them Can off. you see the height he's got to lift up? Yeah. It's a man's job. Yeah. The pattern will be in the box there. The box is in two parts. The pattern's placed yeah. in there, pulled out. You put the core in, yeah. close the box up, clamp it down, and then the metal is poured yeah. through the, 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 yeah, the blowholes there. Yeah. But it is really, it's, it's just really to make sure you get a a continuous flow of good yeah. quality metal. It's the idea of like the three pouring holes. Well, it's just to make sure that you get an yeah. equal flow through the moulding yeah, box, Fred. That's about the size of yeah. it. But uh, it's certainly an age-old process and we've yeah. been here for a long, long time. Oh, this, this like, area is very famous for fundraising. It, it really it? is, central Scotland. Yeah, the, the, way back to 1803, you know, yes, the Cannon indeed. Iron Works. Yeah. That's right. We, we've been here for a, since about 1820, the, the company was uh, started there. I think it was established in about 1856, and it has been in the Ballantyne family now. And yeah, and Mr. Yeah. Ballantyne is yeah. still, you know, the yeah. you know, son and heir, and good news for us, he has a young son, so hopefully oh, he'll come along and join us. He's, yeah. he's at university at the minute, but yeah. uh, the yeah. other good thing about Mr. Ballantyne and that is when he was coming into the shop at first, his father made him come here and do this. Yeah, he he yeah, made him do the yeah. moulding and yeah. he worked in the pattern yeah. shop and he worked in the fitting shop. So yeah. it's, uh, you know, so you'd have a real insight into the, yeah, the yeah, job it's itself. Yeah. Uh, sadly, there's, you know, we're getting less and less and we're one of the last few standing now. Yeah. Just recently, two of the largest foundries in Scotland yeah. just closed down there and yeah. you've got to feel for the men and the skills yeah. that are, are sort of left on the street now, Fred. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. We soldier on. How long does it take one of your molders to learn that traditionally? 
only can be left on his own. It's it's really a, a five year apprenticeship. Oh. You know, there are a lot of father and son combinations in here. So they'll, yeah. you know, learn the skills from their dad. <laughs> Every moulder's responsible for his own ladle at the end of the day. He'll need to chop that out back to the metal and then reline it, get it dried off. We've got little individual dryers and then, you know, it's ready for the next day again. In 1950, there were more than 200 foundries like this in central Scotland. Now this is one of the only ones left. Back at the railway, it's time to get prepared for the next stage of the journey. Come on, men, it's time we were away. Right, sure. Are you ready? Yep. Wagons roll. <coughs> They're going to be heading back south to England. But before they leave this part of Scotland, Fred wants to have a look at the fourth bridges and see if they can drive the engine over the road bridge. They're not sure whether traction engines are allowed across the bridge. Two, yeah. two together. At last. One built this century and one last century. Uh, which is the rail bridge? The, the Redden. The, oh, the Never right. Scott Painting. Hey, there's a train going over. It's yeah, all yeah, like yeah, a blooming yeah, model. Yeah, Look at yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, when they built that one, they were, I think 57 men were killed building it. The rail bridge. The rail bridge. And the other one, they, there were only a few, there were only a couple or two killed on yeah. the other one. Yeah. But, uh, Two, two of Scotland's greatest landmarks. Looks impressive. Oh, aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is when you're on top. I've been on the rail bridge, uh, yeah. you know, on, on the ironwork like. Yeah. Well, if you're going up ironwork today, I'm not coming with you. Yeah, you not? No. no. When it was built, the railways, it was the longest in Europe for a spell, weren't it? I, I don't know yeah. that, but yeah, I know yeah, one thing, it, instead of it being built out of wrought iron, it was one of the earliest structures built out of steel. On steel, it? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a boot once with magnificent drawings and pictures in, and I lent it to me and never come back. Of, of the whole construction of it all, you know, as it went on from day to day. Mm. It was a right good boot, that. We ain't got it no more, you know. How far across is it, do you know? No what? idea. It's a long way. It's a <laughs> set from here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, I wonder if they'll let us go over with this. There might be some sort of speed job, you know, you might not be able to do 20 mile an hour or something like that, which we can't do, can we? There's but one thing about it, we'll not have to pay at all because these will not be on the notice board. No, no, that's a fact, <laughs> yeah. I didn't think about that, yeah. But are they going to let them across? Just come over your bridge, Alistair, and it didn't collapse. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Did you have yeah. any problems getting up the, yeah. the well, slope? Well, yeah, it's, the engine isn't really running as good as it should be doing, but uh, it made it all right, you know, that's the main thing. How old is it now, your bridge? 
Well, the bridge opened in 1964, yeah, so we're just approaching our 40th yeah, yeah. anniversary. Do you have much maintenance? Well, we've got a big problem. Yeah. Uh, not only do we have to maintain the structure because it's yeah. 40 years old, but it was designed in the 50s when oh, the heaviest yeah. Yeah, commercial like vehicle was only yeah. 24 yeah. tonne. Yeah. And now the, the, the European yeah. standard is yeah. 44. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Added to that, last year we carried 24 million vehicles. Oh my night. Uh, <laughs> That's a lot, isn't When it, it opened in yeah, 64. They, uh, well, can they not put stronger ropes on there, you know? It's, it's not the ropes that are the problem. I mean, no. the, the towers are now reaching their, their limit. The main oh, cable's yeah. reaching its limit. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we, we recently put a new tower inside that tower. Yeah, yeah. And the wall thickness of that new steel is about an inch and a half. Mm, so okay. you, you have a, a column taking an extra 6,000 ton mm, mm, mm. off the yeah, existing off the outside, tower. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In fact, we put so much load into the new tower mm. that the existing bridge mm. had been relieved of its weight and actually went up an inch and a half. Lummy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, So yeah, it was a big yeah. operation. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Notice it's one or two bits where it were a bit up and down here, eh? the road surface, you know. Well, what, you, what you've got to remember, Fred, is when it's blowing up quite a gale now, but yeah, if, if oh, the yeah. wind got up to 100 mile an hour, yeah, yeah. the centre yeah. span would move out 23 and a half feet Lummy, eh? yeah. in the direction of that wind. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, every 60 way, feet across the deck, you've got yeah. a movement joint and that's where you get the clatter as you yeah, go across the yeah, bridge. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't think that, would you? It's oh, 23 it's a, foot. 23 foot in a 100 hell. mile an hour yeah. wind. So it's magic. So it's left hand down a bit as you're heading to Fife. <laughs> <laughs> what size wind you recorded over there? We've uh, put it off the scale about 102. Oh, so you've had them gun. Mm. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. We're, we're pretty far north. Do you have to you? close? We close at 85. Yeah to all vehicles because after that point you're starting to get light heads coming off and blowing around it's a bit dangerous yeah, yeah. and standing where you are you would actually see the bridge mm, well, starting yeah. to oscillate somebody explained that amazing, still no, today. Isn't it? yeah yeah how high are they them towers you're 508 feet above the mm. river if you're standing yeah. on the top of these towers yeah no, i've never been up a chimney that big again and what's the highest oh, yeah. chimney you've been up then oh, uh, three Two. 300 foot, you know. 300 yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah. That was We're without not, a uh, lift. We attempted to knock a concrete bomb down uh, that were 450 foot high, but the bloody thing fell down a day early, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first traction engine ever to have driven across the fourth bridge under its own steam.